Hello, my name is Scott McLeod. I'm a member of Nautel's customer service team and I'm going to demonstrate on this video how to tune an ATU, ATU 500SR and using a Vector 125. Some safety precautions we have to take when tuning the ATU 500SR is there can be potentially thousands and thousands of volts at the output of the ATU. Um, whenever we're working inside the ATU um, or near the antenna, we should have the transmitter low in power or off. But keep in mind, even at low power out of the transmitter, we can still have potentially dangerous volts at the output of the ATU. So before we tune the ATU, there's some connections we have to make. 24 volts from the transmitter comes through the liquid tight connector and gets terminated on this board, 24 volts, and that powers up the ATU so it can, has a control circuitry and it can auto-tune. We also have serial communication so that the information from this ATU can be fed back to the transmitter for monitoring. Um, some other connections include the antenna. In this uh, simulation, I'm using this uh, capacitor bank and this dummy load to simulate my antenna. And from here, we can start tuning our ATU. Before we can tune the ATU, we have to first give the initial tap settings for the coils and the matching transformer. For the coils, we can either just arbitrarily pick one of the uh, six tap settings we can use from the handbook or we can try to narrow it down by calculating the inductance we need using the antenna capacity, the frequency of our system and what type of coils we have. So for this test and this setup I've decided to start with the maximum inductance on my coils because I have no idea what my antenna is. Um, I decided to use 10 ohms for my matching transformer. Now I got the tap selections here from table 3-3 in the ATU500 manual and figure 3-3 tells you how to connect the coils together. And now before we start tuning I'm going to go to the transmitter and set it up so we can start putting power into our ATU and start our tuning procedure. So we have the transmitter connected to the ATU and we're going to start putting power into the ATU. Now the ATU is not tuned so it's going to look like a horrible load to the transmitter. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the transmitter is set for zero watts. I do that by pressing increase and decrease at the same time. That will set power to zero when I turn on. I'm in local mode and now I'm going to turn my RF on. Now when I'm first tun tuning the ATU, I don't want any modulation on my transmitter. So I'm going to go turn off my modulation. My modulation is off. So now I'm going to start increasing power while monitoring the forward and reflected power. And I'm going to try to increase it to 10 watts if I can before I get an SWR alarm. If I get an SWR alarm I'll stop. I'm at 10 watts and now we're going to go to the ATU and see what the ATU is doing for tuning. So now that I have my transmitter set at 10 watts with zero modulation with the modulation off, I'm at the ATU. Now I can see from the ATU meter that I have a forward power reading of 10 watts and a reflected power reading of 10 watts so I'm nowhere near tuned. I have my power on and I'm going to turn my auto switch on in a second. Now there's three things that can happen when I turn this on. Either the coils will stay, will they stay where they are, they will move down, which means they're decreasing inductance, or they'll move up. So we're going to turn it on and see what happens. So now the coils are moving down. So now I'm going to wait to see if the coils stop moving, and if they stop moving, are they at the min limit? So the coils are tuning and they're mo still moving in a downward direction, so we're still decreasing inductance. And we're starting to get close to our min limit. The coils stopped. So that means either the coils are at their min limit or we're tuned. So I'm going to manually slew the motor and the coils and find if it retunes. So I'm going to decrease, so I'm going to move it down a bit further. 
by pressing and holding the decrease button and it stopped. So I'm at my min limit right now, I cannot decrease it anymore. When I let go of the button it does not manually increase. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change the tap settings on my coil from the inductance they're at now to a lower inductance. Now to do that I'm going to turn the transmitter off. One of the benefits of the A2500SR, if the serial connection between the A2 and the transmitter is made, from this board I can turn off my transmitter and I'll show the meter here on forward power, it's at 10 watts. I have a red button here, it means the transmitter is off and I have zero watts. So now I'm going to have to move the coils all the way up and then we're going to adjust them. So I've moved the coils all the way to the top, I've disconnected the wire that was connected on the bottom tap on this coil and I'm moving it to the middle tap to go to the next lowest setting. It's important to note that you, the transmitter must be RF off when touching the coils because there's potentially lethal voltages here. Once the connection is made, verify it's tight and now I'm going to turn the transmitter on again. The coils are moving back down, decreasing the inductance again. So now we're going to wait until the coils stop moving. So the coils have stopped. So to confirm that they're tuned, I'm going to manually decrease. And verify, verify that the coils go back up, and they do. I'm going to increase. Verify the coils go back down. So now my coils are tuned. Now if I look at my forward and reflected power on my meter, my forward power is about 10 watts. My reflected is really low, so I'm actually very close to being tuned. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the transmitter, increase the power to about 25 watts. So I went to the transmitter, I turned it back, I turned it up to 25 watts. I've got 25 watts forward on my meter here. I'm going to look at reflected. My reflected is very little, it's got very little deflection. But to verify that my matching transformer taps are set properly, what I'm going to do is adjust them and find out if the reflected power goes up or down. Right now I have these set to 10 ohms according to table 3-3 in the manual. So now I'm going to turn my transmitter off. Verify forward power goes down to zero. And now I'm going to change these taps from 10 ohms to 12.5 ohms. So the transmitter is still off. I've changed my A tap to 4 and my B wire to 8 as per the table 3-3 which gives me 12.5 ohms. Now I'm going to turn the transmitter back on. And my forward power is a little higher now. It's a little above 25 watts. My reflective power is almost zero. So that's actually a better tap setting. So I'm at about 30 watts now and I'd say zero watts reflected. Now my ATU is tuned. The final step in tuning the ATU is we're going to turn the transmitter up to our operating power level, whatever that is. Uh, turn on our modulation at the modulation depth we want. And then we're going to set the ATU spark gap. So at the transmitter, I've increased the power up to its max power. We're at 120 watts now forward. Our reflected power is 0.3, so we're really well tuned. Now what I'm going to do is start setting up my modulation. So to do that I'm going to go to peripherals, keyer settings, audio levels. The first thing I'm going to do is set my keying pot to 100. This number does not mean the modulation is going to come on at 100%, it just means it's going to come on at a lower level. This number is a pot level that goes from 0 to 255. Once that's done, I'm going to go to modulation. I'm going to turn my modulation on. I'm going to leave my keyer off so I get a constant tone. Now to get rid of this audio tone we're hearing, I'm going to turn my speaker off on my transmitter by going to select peripherals and the speaker deselecting it. So we don't have to hear it, although we still have modulation. 
Now I'm going to look at how much modulation I have right now. And my modulation percent now is 39.3%. An important thing to do is to verify that the current and voltage sample determine which one gives the higher modulation reading. So if I go into settings and monitor settings and mod percent thresholds, continue, that's a warning, I can toggle the sample. Right now my RF monitor is on volts. I'm going to toggle it to current. I'm going to go back, main menu, meters. Now my mod percent A is only 31.1%. So the voltage sample is giving us the higher reading. So we're going to have to make sure when we set up our modulation level we're using the volt setting. And now we're going to go back to peripherals and start turning up our modulation. Peer settings, audio levels, to increase modulation I go to the king pot, modify it, and as I increase this number you'll see the modulation percent increase. So a typical value people want to get for modulation seems to be around 90 to 95 percent. So we're going to see if we can get 90 percent. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, it's close enough to 90% modulation. I'm going to say done. I'm going to go to my main menu and look at my reflected power. Now you can see my reflected power is now up at 3.5. That's because the modulation energy is now being seen as reflected power. But 3.5 is a little higher than we'd want to go. You see the VSWR is 1.4. Ideally you'd want it less than 1.4. So in this circumstance, we can do a couple things to make it go down. The easiest one is to lower the modulation. The other things we can do is change the mod depth. But for the sake of this test, we'll leave it as is because the A2 is tuned. So the last step for our system is go to our keyer settings, turn on our keyer, and now we're broadcasting. So the last thing we have to do to the ATU is we have to set up our spark gap. And to do that there's a procedure in the book and we will go through it right now. So we've got the transmitter up at full power um, with our 90% modulation. So the last thing we have to do is calculate our spark gap which is outlined in your ATU 500 manual in section 5. The measurements you'll need is antenna current which you can get off this meter here by selecting current and our antenna current is approximately 3 RF amps and now we can just enter that value in the formula in section 5.4 and we can calculate our spark gap. Our spark gap is located up here in this corner and that is the end of the ATU tuning.